All right, so we're looking at code.org functions here, step seven of that lesson, which actually you're going to write your own functions for a collector game, which is really kind of cool. Um, so if we look at our code, like, let's look at the directions here first. It says read, run the code that already exists, make sure you know how it works, write the code for the set coin function. And the set coin function is right down here towards the bottom, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna set the coin's velocity to move down and set the coin's Y position to the top of the screen. So let's go ahead and run this. And right now we have a character and then we have a coin here and it's gonna move down and then touch that character and we want it to collect that and have the score go up. So what we wanna do is affect the coin function or the set coin right down here. All right, so what we're gonna to need to do is if we look at the directions is we need to read, run the code, okay, we did that. And then we need to set the coin's velocity to move down, which means going to affect the y-axis here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get going on this. So we're going to drag this out and we'll do coin. And let's make that 10. So let's take a look and see how that works. It's always good to kind of take your code and run it step by step, see if that works. And let's actually do... Oh, we need to set the velocity as well, right? Yeah, yes, set the velocity. And I was actually just setting the Y location. Let's try that again. And let's make that three. So we're gonna have it appear up here. All right, my mistake. And then there's velocity. Okay, so now let's go ahead. There we go, that looks a little bit better. Now what we want to do is, well, let's run this a second. Will the score go up? It should be over here. Okay, we don't have it doing that yet. Okay. All right, so now we got to set the coin so it doesn't just keep going right here. We want to have it move across here. Okay, so let's go ahead and reset that a second. And we're going to go to the coin.x right here. And let's make that a random. So we'll drag this out. And let's make it across the whole screen here. So if we show the grid, we'll go from zero over here to 400. There we go. That looks really good. All right, let's move on to the next step and work on building this coin collector game. Okay, so now we're on to step eight here and what we're gonna do is a few things. So do this, it says use the if statement and the is touching block to increase our score. Okay, so if we look at our code down here, let's tackle that one first. We have an if, we have a couple of different ifs, but we do not have the if touching. So let's place this right here. So let's go ahead and do control. And then we're going to use the if touching or is touching. So what we wanna do is if the coin is touching the bunny, okay? So then what we want to do with that is we want to have the score go up. So the best way to do that is actually just drag this out here. And we're going to say that score is equal to something. What we want to do is we want to use math over here and say that score is plus one. So basically what happens is when it touches this, is score is going to take the previous score, whatever that was, and add, add one to it, or whatever we want it to be. In this case, we're going to add one to it. And then what we want to do, is we want to add our function in here, our set function, or set coin. What this will do is every time it touches the bunny, it's going to raise the score, then it's gonna look here and go down and find our set coin right here and run all of this, 
Okay, so let's take a look at that. Oh, of course he doesn't touch it. Let's move him over. There we go. So he touches the coin. And that works. Score goes up. And then it resets the coin. Okay, so then what else do we have to do here? Make sure you're calling your function to reset the coin once it's been caught. Yep, and then play the game to randomize the velocity of the coin in range that you think is fun. So then the last thing here is we need to look at this velocity right here. And instead of making it three, let's make it a random thing. Now this could be whatever we want it to be, but in this case, I'm just gonna make it between one and three or yeah, one and three. We'll make one and three. You could do two and four. You could do whatever you wanted it to be. You got to be a little careful, though, that if you make it too high, it's going to go really fast. So let's take a look at this for a second. See what we got. All right, that works pretty well. well let's just see what happens if we make it 20. That's not bad either. Not yet. But you can see now it's going too fast. Yeah. So let's make it like four. And the one might be a touch slow. So let's make that two. All right. Now we'll reset that. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. All right. So there you go. All right, so the last step in our collector game, step nine of functions, is it says use an if statement in two separate functions to draw your background. Then go write your functions outside of your draw loop. You can get to decide what a simple or silly background are. Have fun with it. Okay, so let's go ahead and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to the bottom and let's make a simple background. I think that's what they talk about here right so we have simple or silly backgrounds are you get to decide so let's just do a simple one we'll go ahead make a function down here let's call this simple background and let's just make it really very very basic Let's go ahead and drag background out. We could do whatever we wanted to with this. We could just say a color. We can make it blue. And then let's make a different background. So let's go back to our functions and now we're gonna make a silly background. And let's do hmm let's see let's do start with green all right actually thinking about this we're just gonna leave the simple background as white make that super simple and then the green um, let's let's add a few things in here let's make like some rectangles and let's fill that in like yellow actually let's make a background color right here and make that red and this rectangle. We'll just drag, we'll drag an ellipse over here. Oops.
these are just going to be just shapes that I'm drawing. You could do whatever you want here with this. You could just use this as a time to try out different things like what is the arc? What is the line? You could try different things with that. I'm just going to do a couple here. But let's go ahead and jump to our last thing, which is then we got to go write the functions. Um, use the if statement and draw your backgrounds. OK, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and drag our if, and what we want to use actually is an if else, because what we're basically going to do is say that if the score is less than a number, then it's going to keep the simple background. Okay, if it's greater than that, use the other background. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our math here a second, and we'll say score. Oops, is less than five. No drag these over here so we got this one and we have this one this is simple background this is silly let's take a look and see what we got There you go. And I could keep adding to this, but that works great. All right, hopefully that helps you, and good luck with your coding.